Hi, this is Jake Romali, Associate Editor of Neurology Reviews. With me is Dr. Ilo Lepic. Dr. Lepic is a professor of pharmacy and neurology at the University of Minnesota. Uh, we're at the 2016 annual meeting of the American Academy of Neurology, where Dr. Lepic provided a lecture about treating epilepsy in the elderly. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us. Yeah, thank you. What are the demographics of this patient population, uh, the elderly with epilepsy? Uh, the scary part is that epilepsy is more common after age 50 than almost any other age group. Uh, so epilepsy in children is fairly common until if maybe 20 years ago, before we had a lot of elderly in the population, the sort of standard wisdom was that epilepsy was a disorder of children. But we're now learning that epilepsy is much more common after age 50, and the incidence, that is, new cases of epilepsy per year keeps climbing until uh, by the age 80 or 90, epilepsy in elderly, new epilepsy in elderly is probably four or five times more common than new epilepsy in children. And it's estimated, uh, certainly we've done nursing home studies, and we find that probably six to seven percent of all nursing home patients have epilepsy. So it's going to be more common. And if you look at our population aging, uh, there's going to be an epidemic of epilepsy in the elderly. In Finland already, uh, there are more new cases of epilepsy in people over 65 than there are new cases in the whole population under 65. How does the incidence of first seizure in the elderly differ from the incidence of first seizure in younger patients? Well, the seizures in the elderly, first seizure, uh, they may differ a little more in the sense that they might be due to something that's damaging the brain already, like a brain tumor. But for many, the first seizure is spontaneous, and we may not even find a specific cause, just like in, uh, in younger people. Certainly, geriatricians would almost always treat a person who's had a single seizure uh, with anti-seizure medication because they were aware of the fact that if they did have a second seizure, even if the risk was low, they didn't want to take the chance. So, uh, but nowadays I think we're getting finally a little bit better information as what is the risk factor of a second seizure after you've had a single seizure. The treatment itself, though, can entail certain risks. That is correct. There's always a risk of starting uh, any medication. That is, but the risk if the medication is properly used, and this is one reason I was very glad the Academy asked me to speak on this, is that the risk can be minimized if you know about the pharmacokinetics of the medication, if you know how to interpret blood levels properly, uh, and if you're very cautious about avoiding medications that might exacerbate an underlying neurological condition. The biggest problem uh, is that elderly, unlike younger folks, generally are on a number of medications. and. Uh, I think the very first uh, shot would be to pick a drug that has no drug interactions with anything. And luckily we do have a few medications that fall into that category today. Um, and certainly that uh, would be a category of drugs I would go for first. In this lecture today, I didn't want to get too specific because that would have stretched my lecture out to a couple of hours. <laughs> Uh, so, but I just sort of wanted to give a guideline that uh, you'd look first to pick a drug that has no or minimal drug interactions with anything that the patient may be on, and to look at the patient uh, much as uh, you would look at a woman of childbearing potential because you don't know what the patient's going to have the next time you see them in clinic, and you want to be thinking in advance and, and pretending to know that they might be on certain drugs next time you see them. So it's very important to, to have respect for the elderly, and a lot of times, uh, in our society especially, uh, once you get to be a little older, people sort of forget that you are a human being, that, that you do have uh, desires. And I think the picture I showed of my um, woman was just very representative. Uh, she did not think of herself as a 92-year-old, decrepit old woman put away in nursing home. She, she really considered herself to be very active. And again, my wife's grandmother also until 95 was active and uh, she really had a body, self-image of not of 92 sitting in a wheelchair with 
all kinds of problems. Being depressed, she really was out there. Uh, she had a little um, chickens in her backyard and a couple of fruit trees in the backyard and was always cooking and was always doing stuff like that. So I think it's important, especially for physicians, to, to understand that uh, older folks are, are really in need of quality of life.